Ladies and gentlemen, every year about 13 lakh aspirants appear for the UPSC. Less than a thousand end up clearing the exam every year and becoming part of India's civil services. So they become IES officers and IPS officers and IFS officers who help administer a nation of 1.4 billion people. But the most challenging aspect of their jobs, perhaps, is dealing with netas, elected representatives who come in with a god complex and think they can run roughshod over everyone, including bureaucrats and police officers. Now, don't get me wrong, the friction has always existed. But it's only in recent years it has gotten downright ugly. Just take a look at what has happened this week itself. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a situation where in one week, we have a young IPS officer shunted out for chalaning a Neta's wives' vehicles and bulldozers. And we have a situation where an SDM is slapped for doing his job and preventing a candidate from entering the polling booth. Both doing their jobs, both punished for it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start with this young woman. Her name is Ilma Afroz. She is an IPS officer from the 2017 batch. She's a farmer's daughter. She's worked in fields. She's worked her way up. She went to one of India's best colleges, St. Stephen's College. She must be bright. Then, on a scholarship, she went to study at the University of Oxford. She wrote the civil services, became an IAS officer. In Baddi Himachal Pradesh, where she was posted as the SP, she's known as Lady Singham. Well, this Lady Singham has now been unceremoniously sent off on long leave by the Congress government. Because you will not believe this. She chalaned the vehicle of the wife of the local Congress MLA. She also chalaned some bulldozers that belong to the MLA's business. So, Netaji... His name is Ram Kumar Chaudhary, launched war and even filed a privilege motion in the Himachal Assembly seeking her transfer from Baddi. He got his way and kicked up a storm in the hill state. Listen into who said what. SP Hone ke naate, Madam ne vahaan par koshish ki ki bhi hum vivasthaan ko chik tara se vahaan par rakhe. लेकिन जो सरकार में जो प्रतिनिधि हैं जिनको कैबिनेट की दर्जे दे रखे हैं उन लोगों ने उनके परिवार के लोगों ने जिस प्रकार के एक माहौल बना के रखा है उसका परिणाम यह हुआ कि आखिरकार इल्मा फ्रोज जो है जो वहां पर एसपी थी रातों रात सामान समेट करके चले गई अपने घर चले गई मुझे मालूम नहीं उनका ट्रांसफर हुआ कि नहीं मुझे मालूम नहीं है उन्हें छुट्टी दी है कि क्या किया है लेकिन जो जानकारी मिली कि सरकार के की ओर से कोऑपरेशन नहीं मिली क्योंकि जो भ्रष्टाचार चल रहा है जो दादागिरी चल रही है जो गुंडागर्दी चल रही है उसको पूरा गवर्नमेंट का प्रोटेक्शन है ऐसे में एक महिला अधिकारी के पास कोई और विकल्प नहीं बचा शायद इसलिए वो वहां से चले गए आईपीएस को भी हिंदू और मुसलमान में देखने लगे कौन से परिवार से है वो वो आईपीएस अधिकारी है वो किसी भी धर्म से है किसी भी जाति से लेकिन जो आपके पास खबर है वो आधी अधूरी है चलान तो सारा दिन दिल्ली पुलिस भी करती है तमाम पुलिस करती है चलान की वजह से ऐसा नहीं होता और ना विधायक जहां तक मेरी जानकारी है ना उनकी पत्नी उससे कोई संबंध नहीं है आधिकारिक कोई स्टेटमेंट आएगा तो जरूर हम आपके साथ शेयर करेंगे लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन दिस इज नॉट अ हिंदू वर्सेज मुस्लिम इशू दिस इज अ ब्यूरोक्रैट वर्सेज नेताजी इशू एंड हियर द कांग्रेस स्पोक्स पर्सन इज से that the Congress MLA in Baddi has nothing to do with her long leave or transfer. Ladies and gentlemen, then why did he move a privileged motion wanting to get this IPS officer transferred out of Baddi? Who are they fooling? Then in Rajasthan, one Netaji almost got away after slapping an SDM yesterday. SDM Amit Kumar, he's on your screens, was just doing his job when independent candidate Naresh Meena came to the booth. He grabbed his collar and smacked him on the head twice. Why? Because Netaji suspected that the SDM was getting voters to vote for the BJP. It didn't stop with the slap. 
It simply didn't stop at what you're seeing right now. Ladies and gentlemen, just take a look at the pictures. This Netaji then went ahead and orchestrated a mini riot in Tonk to prevent his arrest. There was arson. Eight police vehicles were burnt. There was vandalism. There was stone pelting. The highway was blocked by his supporters today. Netaji, who's a Congress rebel, was finally arrested, but not before declaring, na dare the, na darenge. Look at the gumption, look at the guts, look at the arrogance. You slap an officer on duty, and then you dare the police and orchestrate a mini riot to stop your arrest, and then you remain unapologetic. Surrender, nahi karunga. Surrender, nahi karunga. Kar do, kar do. Nahi. Surrender, karne ke liye police kar rahi hai. Nahi karunga, nahi karunga. Main surrender, nahi karunga. Surrender, nahi karunga. Meri baat hai, meri baat hai, puri ho. Collector. Wah, wah, baat kar lenge. Nahi, nahi, kisi baat kar lenge. Ladies and gentlemen, many people over the last many years have argued that India's steel frame, its bureaucracy, is corroding because of the Neta Babu nexus that drives corruption in India. Because civil servants sitting on high horses sometimes show utter disregard for the people they are meant to serve, the people of India. But ladies and gentlemen, there are enough and more people in the system who are steely enough to weather the uncivility of netas and get their jobs done. Ashok Khemka, for example, transferred 53 times in 27 years for doing his job. Then you have Durga Shakti Nagpal. You remember that young 29-year-old IAS officer in Uttar Pradesh? She was suspended for taking on the mining mafia. Question is, do these honest, upright civil servants always have to pay the price for their honesty? Charu Pragya is national spokesperson of the BJP. Joining us on the broadcast, Varun Kullar is an ex-bureaucrat of the MOD, someone who understands the relationship between netas and bureaucrats. P.K. Jain is a former additional DGP of Maharashtra joining us on the broadcast. And advocate Kapil Madan is a political analyst. He's joining us on the broadcast. The Congress party, ladies and gentlemen, has refused to participate in the debate. I'm going to start with P.K. Jain because I want to speak about Ilma Afroz first. Mr. Jain, you have seen the sequence of events. Here is a young, promising intelligent, committed IPS officer who's doing her job. She's doing her job because she's taking on the local mining mafia. She's doing her job because she's chalaning bulldozers that belong to the local Congress MLA. She's doing her job because she's chalaning the MLA's wife. And yet she has paid the price for doing her job. Is this something that is common across India that you have seen in your 40-year-old service as well? If you are too honest, be prepared, like Mr. Khemka, to be transferred 53 times. And that this young woman will simply have to be prepared for it because it is what it is. Good evening, uh, Shreya. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is a fact. Any straightforward officer is always at the receiving stick of the powers that be. It always happens. Some people brave the storm. They are willing to get transferred out. Some bow down and some make compromises. Everybody makes compromises to some extent. It is only the percentage that varies. Somebody would probably do only 10%, which is uh, he thinks that within his moral, moral limits, uh, that's the limit. Some people make more than 100%. But it's a fact that the officers who do their duty honestly, diligently, um, they, they, they are always sidelined in terms of postings they are harassed by the by the establishment and uh, you know the assembly is the best place to beat them that is the place where the ministers can't hold their ground and immediately they would either announce a transfer or a suspension or some other action or some departmental inquiry so this is a fact any sane officer any right thinking officer any strict officer does not find a place in these in the mm. in the setup today in Maharashtra, numerable cases, some happened with me, where you become extra strict. The politicians say, we don't need a strict officer here. Send him to the Indian border, Indian Indo-Pakistan border. So that's the kind of remarks you had. It was much less in the, in the good old days. Now, the politicians have become extremely brash, extremely aggressive. 
and they want their way and in more more often than not cases they they get their way i would also like to fault some of the officers in the establishment Hi. because they have also started getting compromised mm. so when there's a large number of officers available who are willing to get compromised the stricter ones always get the stick so that's what happens now in this case this young lady this young ips officer stood her ground and was willing to be transferred out one thing i always keep saying that anybody who doing a job as per the rules and regulations should be willing to sacrifice in terms of continuity of their posting at one place should be mentally and physically prepared to get transferred to inconsequential postings where he is uh, absolutely thrown to the winds so these are the things which have uh, which are happening okay. today with a with a certainty and with a regularity i don't think uh, you know the the system okay, uh, you know uh, is... can be improved one reason i would also tell you is the national what, police what commission is... the uh, has you know, recommended Jain, the recommendations give me a minute here, mr jain give me yeah. give me a minute give, I, i i'll come to that give me a minute here because you know what is ironical i want to tell you what is ironical ladies and gentlemen the fact that this young officer ilma afroz was actually awarded by chief minister sukhu for her good work just a couple of months ago so a couple of months ago you are given an award for good work and just because you decide to take on a local congress mla you get shunted out varun khular and to me what is even more stunning frankly is her boss's silence what is the top cop in himachal pradesh doing it one of his jobs is to protect protect varun khular young officers who work under you there will be political pressure of course there will be political pressure there will be political friction but as uh, a boss it's your job to protect people who work under you uh that's totally uh, right uh if you look at baddi right this is the most lucrative posting in himachal if you right it has the pharma uh, industry uh, right so what happens is that every other officer in himachal pradesh would be looking to trying to get to you know become the sp of baddi so uh, that is the kind of you know if you are you know not listening to the powers that be or maybe the local mla you're not uh, you know good in good terms with him or her right uh, so that will go against you right and then that's the demand that obviously which came out right uh, so for you know for good officers uh, you know we have to be protected uh, from the you know like uh, from you know the political pressures as well in the, in these cases plus if you think about the sand mining mafia right that's also again a huge problem uh, across the states right a few years ago i think in 22 uh, one dsp was you know you know run over in haryana right uh, for trying to control uh, the sand mining mafia in nu so uh, this is something that is a hazard uh, right for any officer right who's righteous and is willing to uh, you know you make claim that okay i will do what is right so that's i think the cost as so my mention right uh, jain sir rightly mentioned that you know that's something that comes with the job you have to take it right um, and uh, yes uh, senior officers should is it, protect even varun is it hmm. but but is it is the problem that that most of the bureaucracy okay you know i may be a little unfair in saying that most of the bureaucracy has compromised but you mm-hmm. have someone who is a former ips officer saying that everyone does compromise only the degrees vary absolutely what happened the level yeah. of compromised has reached a point where netas think that civil servants are their personal servants and not the servants of the people of this country the galti civil servants ki bhi hai yes so as i pointed out right uh, that you know but the every other ips officer in himachal would be looking right ki, you know can i get posted here right uh, that's one of uh, because that's the best place to be in himachal in some ways uh, right uh, in terms of the perks and privileges you will be getting there so that kind of gives you if that put you know that would put uh, pressure on elma definitely i would definitely say that uh, because everybody is saying that okay i want to be here as well mm-hmm. uh but uh you know still you have to stand your ground and you think that this is not something that uh you can you know look away from and i think the chalan thing reminds me of kiran bedi i perhaps right long years ago you know kiran bedi did it to mrs indra gandhi's car and that was like the biggest news and when we were starting to become civil servants that was something that we all uh, you know uh, got inspired from 
right? Uh, so that's, I think, um, my view on this stuff. Yes, the, you know, we, the, you know, we need to but protect, she, she, especially she the police force. she didn't get force. punished for it. Oh, yeah, that's how... But you know, you know the fact the is, Kiran Bedi didn't get, didn't get punished for chalaning Indra Gandhi's car. And that is to the credit of Indra Gandhi, Charu Pragya. Yeah. What is the difference between what has happened in Rajasthan and what has happened, Charu, uh, in Himachal is this. In Himachal, this young IPS officer took on someone who was from the ruling party, which is why she has been shunted out. Now, in Rajasthan, of course, the case is opposite. This is a rebel Congress MLA who slapped the SDM and therefore the BJP government ensured that he got arrested, which is the right thing to do. But is it unfortunate that this is the level at which re the relationship between netas and bureaucrats has reached, where you simply don't think of anything before slapping an SDM or shunting out uh, an IPS officer for merely doing her job? Good evening, Shreya. I uh, wish our uh, topic of the debate today was uh, something which was a little better, but this is a heartbreaking situation. I come from a bureaucratic family. My father was an IPS officer, served his whole life. And yes, the situation of officers getting transferred because they are merely doing their job well is a persistent one. At the same time, there are an equal number of officers who push back and they push back strongly. Uh, respectfully, I would like to disagree with the uh, sir on the panel who said that everybody is willing to compromise and it was better earlier. So maybe in some ways it was better earlier, but today at least we have media which that is willing to cover stories such as this. At least we have social media which does not allow such stories to be swept under the carpet and forgotten. We can at least bring them up. Ilma Afroz is a woman who was selected from over 13 lakh candidates. Barely 150 IPS officers are selected every single year. So yes, she's brilliant. She was doing her job fabulously well. It is not just uh, finding the car which belonged to an MLA. There was another situation with her where a scrap trader complained of shots being fired on his vehicle. Later, it was told that all this was done to get a gun license. The scrap trader is allegedly very close to a senior, senior Congress leader in Himachal. And all of this added up to the situation where we had a young officer refusing to bow down to political pressure and politicians who thought they could do what they want and get away with it. A situation such as this is unfortunately getting uh, common in our country. In Delhi, we had another leader misbehave with the IAS officer at Shaheen Bagh. Recently, Renuka Shahani had an incident where she held on to a police officer with his collar, dragged uh, him uh, 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 a short distance because uh, she didn't want to be stop doing whatever she was doing. Anok Sharma, national spokesperson of the Congress party, actually on television hurled a whole glass of water on a retired army officer. So incidents like this where you think that just because you have a little bit of political clout or power is going to allow you to get away with this behavior is not going to continue. Um, I still like to look at the glasses half full, Shreya. And okay. I want to thank you for picking up this story today. Hmm. Kapil Matan, what even explains this behavior? I mean, you know, many people argue that uh, as democracies mature, uh, it is obviously the elected representative that will take over from the bureaucrat and there will be friction. Uh, as if you can learn to work together, great. Otherwise, situations like this will arrive. But what has happened today is that electoral politics is so competitive, competitive Many people argue that Netas only want to work with bureaucrats and IPS officers who are committed to them and their ideology and not necessarily uh, to the people of this country. Is there yeah. any way to defend what Himachal Pradesh has done with this young IPS officer? Now, now, Shreya, you know, uh, I'll be making two very quick points here. Insofar as this issue in Himachal Pradesh is concerned, at least whatever I could, you know, search on the uh, media and, you know, other platforms such as Twitter, I don't think, uh, you know, the IPS herself has made, you know, any allegation anywhere. And if the story which you are saying is indeed true, that she was indeed transferred for chalaning the, uh, you know, minister in the MLA, then I'm sure, you know, the officer you know, has a recourse available, she can approach the court and this kind of uh, high-headedness of the administration should be called out, be it BJP, be it Congress or be it any other party. 
But let me also give you another side of it. Now, sometimes it do happens that the bureaucrats and the you know official who are working in the administrations, because of their particular political lineage, they do cross the line. And I'll give you an example, uh, a very categorical and a very recent example. Uh, uh, recently, what the Honorable Supreme Court has said, you may recall yesterday, Supreme Court passed the bulldozer judgment, wherein the court has called that this is lawlessness. And the court has also extended the judgment and said that the officials who are involved in this eagle uh, demolitions, the recovery has to be made from them. So all I am saying is, yes, I do agree with you that, you know, politic, uh, pol uh, politicians and uh, people who are at the influence, uh, influential position in the society, they do try to create roadblocks sometimes in uh, uh, the way official needs to function. Mm -hmm. But there is an opposite Kapil side Madan, to what it. are you saying? You are saying that Ilma Afroz had a political leaning? No. Because no. of which she was incapable no. of no. working... No. No. Of working with this no. particular Congress MLA or the Congress government? Huh? No, I never hmm. said that. I never, I never suggested that. And I, I, I only said, what I said was hmm. that there is no empirical, verifiable information available wherein the IPS officer herself has made this allegation, which we are debating on the story. What I am saying is that this could, there could be a possibility that what we are debating is She will obviously not, not come on the public and make any allegation, <laughs> na? She's no, still in I'm service. Still, no, no, Shro, Shreya, She's still in service. Me. She's ruled by the Official Secrecy Act. Shreya, she will not Shreya, come out and make a statement now, in public. Now, no, but the Shreya, fact is that everyone that. in Baddi Shreya, knows that Shreya, the local MLA Shreya, had launched a war against her. Shreya, he had even gone Shreya, to the assembly Shreya, seeking seeking her Shreya, to be transferred out of Baddi. Shreya, all I'm saying is that you have given... Now he gets his way and you're saying nine, eight, the two are not no, linked. No, Shreya, allow me to, you know, finish... I think I can expect uh, an uninterrupted time, at least on your show, because you've been kind enough all throughout the shows and everyone has spoken uninterrupted. What I am saying here is that if there is a, let's assume, let's assume for a minute this story is indeed true. I'm not admitting, but I am assuming that this is indeed true. But if there is an illegal suspension or if there is an, you know, any illegality that has been committed towards any individual, be it uh, an officer or any other uh, class of citizen, he or she has an avenue to approach the court. I mean, it is preposterous to say that if a wrong has been committed to an individual, especially a person who is a protector of rule of no, law, she will approach. She is prohibited no, from she will approach. The court and she will approach the authorities that need to be approached. She may or may not. No, but that's no, not so, the point. So, the point Austria, of what uh, we are debating today is the, the high-handedness and arrogance that Netas have shown this week itself. And now, these two cases what? have come to the media. Now, God knows now, there are 500 such cases yeah, that don't come to the media. PK Chen, you were making a point about protecting officers like Ilma Afroz. Give me a moment here. You know, the Prime Minister has begun to speak in Mumbai. I do need to go to that. But Mr. PK Chen, I'll give you 20 seconds. 20 seconds to just make the point you were making about protecting young officers like Ilma. See, one thing is, uh, <clears throat> my co panelist said about uh, her making a uh, public statement. Well, she is in service. She is bound by the disciplinary rules. And there's no way that she'll be speaking out in public. If she does that, she stands the chance of even getting placed under suspension. So that is one part. Second part is the protection part. See, there were good old days. The senior officers had the moral courage to protect their juniors. Not so anymore. There's very rarely, it's very rare that a senior officer stands up for a junior officer and that too, not publicly. He will probably go and approach the chief minister directly and request that this officer is good. Please don't uh, victimize her or maybe send her to a good, better place if she has to be shifted from, from here. These kind of things do happen. But protection per se to a junior officer is practically non-existent today. Well, you know, whichever okay. service you take it. So uh, mm. uh, uh, senior officer standing up for any junior officer uh, is now uh, practically unheard of. Because number one, one is not even sure about the credentials as to what exactly happened. It is between the MLA's wife and this young officer, what exactly happened. So, uh, you know, who crossed the line uh, is again not known. But yes, taking action against the bulldozers or taking some Actually, other hard-headed action. Actually, Baddi, everyone knows what the, the story general, is. The general reputation of the officer. Actually, all these in Baddi, where she's known as Lady Singham, Mr. Jain, everyone knows what the story is. Now, the Congress no, today held a press saying, conference, the Congress spokesperson saying, Mamla kuch hai. Agar mamla kuch hai, to hai. 
Shreya, despite my... You know, the point is that being... what has happened has given the Himachal Pradesh government very bad press. Yes, Mr. Jain, I have to, I have to, you know, I have to really wrap this show. So I'll, I'll just say thanks and goodbye, goodbye to all my guests it's this evening because I do have to go to the Prime Minister who's speaking in Mumbai. Charu Pragya, thank you very much. Varun Kular, thank you very much, Mr. Jain. Good to have you and yeah. Advocate uh, Kapil thank Madan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On that note, a quick break. Up next, the Prime Minister holding a big rally and speaking at the Shivaji Stadium. We are going to that next. Do stay with us.